why I will not go to tribunal. That is the heading. And the subheading is INEC and judiciary, the biggest threat to democracy in Nigeria. INEC and judiciary, the biggest threat to democracy in Nigeria. Fellow pressmen, in all thriving democracies around the world, the election management body like INEC and the judiciary are its sustaining pillars. The constitutional duty of INEC is to conduct periodic free, fair, and credible elections and declare the popular will of the people as expressed through the ballot, but at moments, election results are not written and prepared before election day. Sorry, I take that again. The constitutional duty of INEC is to conduct periodic, free, fair, and credible elections and declare popular will of the people as expressed through the ballot. But at the moment, election results are now written and prepared before election day under Professor Mahmoud Yakubu. The judiciary is supposed to be the last line of defense of democracy and the rule of law. But the tragedy today is that the judiciary over the years have not lived up to the expectation fully on matters of electoral justice. Worse still, it has now been captured by APC and it's now the weakest link for the subversion of democracy in Nigeria. What a disgrace and shame to the largest black race of the world. A democracy without a rule of law and a courageous judiciary has in it an inner virus that will lead to its destruction. The common saying that judiciary is the last hope of aggrieved citizens is now an empty slogan because the judiciary is truly now the lost hope of the people of Nigeria. That is why I, Dino Melaye, will not dignify a captured judiciary that is now a department of APC by filing a petition over Kogi State's governorship elections that majority of the results were pre-written before the election day by INEC officials. Under the most corrupt chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, the most pernicious, odious, odious vermin that ever presided over election management body in Nigeria. I repeat, Mahmoud Yakubu is the most pernicious, odious vermin that ever presided over the election management body in Nigeria, INEC. Why should any responsible Nigerian go to the tribunal when APC has captured the judiciary and their members, that's APC members, openly boast at rallies about their control of a corrupt judiciary of cash and carry? Why should other political parties and Nigerians participate in future elections with the conclusion of grip and total control of INEC through the appointment of APC card-carrying members as commissioners into INEC, who will recruit ad hoc staff, APC supporters, as pool officials? All recognized individuals of proven integrity from south and northern part of this country applauded by Nigerians for their commitment to credible elections as commissioners have all been eased out of INEC. The way the so-called State Independent Electoral Commission, SIEC, is constituted by governors with party members and supporters is what is happening now. So that means what is happening in SIEC is exactly what is now happening with INEC at the national level. It's constituted by governors with party members and supporters is what is being replicated by this administration with INEC at the federal level. No more elections 
like local governments, but pure writing of results before elections as done in Kogi and Imo states. A typical example is what I will show you now. This is certified through copies. So when SDP was shouting all over the air that they need INEC and they need the tribunal to give them order for INEC to release um, documents to them, we got these documents last week. And they are certified cop through copies by INEC. This is the certified true copy of the Kogi State's election on the 11th of November. This is certified true copies of the presidential election in February. What I want to do here is that we have certified true copies of all the documents, including the registered uh, voters, uh, the voters register, all certified by INEC, and these documents are available with us. I want to say that voters registration ended in November last year, 2022. That means from November last year, there is no voter registration. This is certified through copy from INEC of the results of the presidential and national assembly elections in February this year. As at that time, number of registered voters on this certified true copies showed that in Adavi local government, 114,046 registered voters showed that in Ajakuta local government, 84,614 showed that in Okene local government, 140,452 that's the registered voters as at February, as imputed on this certified true copy of um, INEC results for the February election. But in the certified true copy for the November election, you will note that registration of voters stopped in November 2022. So what we were given in February 2023 on this certified true INEC document is what I read. But on the same INEC certified results of the 2023 November 11 governorship election, the number changed when voters' registration already ended last year. On the face of this document now, for the November 11th election, you remember I said it was 114,046 for Adavi, but in this document, it's now 114,663 inflated. In Ajakuta local government, for example, in February, voters' registration was 84,614, while in the November election, it's 96,000. 504, an increase of over 8,000. In Okehi local government, the same thing. In Okene local government, it was 140,452 in February. But in November election, Okene was inflated to 151,242, an inflation inflated number of 110,987, and this was done in 17 local governments. So the question is, if voters' registration ended November last year, and the February result showed the number of registered voters as at February this year, where did the additional figures inflated in November came from? After all, there has been no voter's registration since November last year. Voter registration is a ceremonial thing that parties take very seriously, politicians take very seriously. So whenever it is announced, we normally mobilize our people to go out and um, participate in registration. The last time such exercise took place was in November 2022. But because they have increased or allocated votes 
that were beyond the registered voters. So they had to up the registered voters up to justify. If not, the votes will be more than registered uh, voters. That is the kind of corruption, fraud that INEC did. And these are certified true copies of documents from INEC showing disparity between February and uh, November. Meanwhile, there is no voters' uh, registration. What future do we have of democracy when the judiciary is captured during the bidding, doing the bidding of APC as the world is seen happening across Nigeria, wherein judiciary is now used to obtain the people's verdict of, for APC in Kano, Nasarawa, Plateau, Zamfara, and many more states in the days ahead. The capture of judiciary signals citizens' possible resort to self-help, and that is dangerous for our society. That is how democracy dies when political elites repudiate or reject the norms and values on which democracy is practiced and the judiciary is captured and unable to do electoral justice. The Presidential Election Tribunal judgment was written in partisan stationery. The CTC of Kano gubernatorial appeal significantly differed, from, differed in the whole section from verbal judgment delivered by the court of appeal. The three paragraphs of the judgment declared to be clerical errors by the court of appeal, surprisingly and curiously, do not have spellings error. Does it mean that clerical error do not have meaning again? Because if you say something is a clerical error, and in the three paragraphs, no single spelling error, as the definition for clerical errors changed, we all know that it is easier to recite after taught judgments than to rewrite well-considered written judgments. And this is actually a big shame. You can see that Labour Party have no judgments. The Labour Party cried out yesterday that they were not given any judgment. They sorted, they asked for judgment, and they said the judgment of the PDP will suffice. And it is laughable that <laughs> in my elementary knowledge of law as a law student or a graduate of law, I know that grounds, when, 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 you, make your, your, when you make your grounds for submissions or issues, that you raise in your submissions are questions. And we are taught in law that those questions for determination must be answered by the courts. But because the courts cannot, in their good consciences, or the judges or justices, cannot, in their good consciences, answer those questions raised by labor, that is why there is no judgment. What are the issues raised? One of those issues is how did the future of a lady appear on the server of INEC instead of posting resort sheets? You posted picture. It's a question for determination. And that question has not been answered. And it is a norm, it is a practice, a convention that questions for determinations, issues raised, must be answered. But because they don't want to answer it, and they know what the implication of answering it, there is no judgment for Labour Party. We all knew that Labour Party is a different party in that matter. PDP is a different uh, party. And the court threw out the sitting at the Supreme Court, did not consolidate the cases of PDP and, um, and Labour Party. And where these cases were not consolidated, how can they have the same judgment? That is one of the fundamental reasons why I would say I have lost complete confidence in the judiciary in Nigeria. In sum, we can say that our country and democracy 
is at its most vulnerable point of decay as a result of institutional capture. Today, nowhere to turn to by citizens for sanity. Judiciary has become an extended section of a political party doing its bidding and delivering predetermined judgments. The fingers of providence will continue to write its verdict on the walls of the, our judiciary as the biggest threat to the survival of democracy in Nigeria. We are at terrible situations that led St. Augustine to declare that a country is nothing but a band of rogues without the rule of law. The judiciary has lent itself to APC capture and it has become the instrument of partisanship. INEC and judiciary in particular have betrayed Nigerians and dashed their hopes and aspirations of democratic ideals through judicial sabotage. We can all now see what the scholar Mutensky meant when he warned that there is no greater tyranny than a tyranny that is perpetrated under the shield of the law in the name of justice. Conclusion. Fellow Nigerians and gentlemen of the press, in the light of the foregoing, I, Senator Dino Melaye, have decided in good conscience not to submit myself to the judiciary that has become an instrument of political tyranny. Just as Pa Awolowo declared after the 1993 rigged elections, when asked why he refused to go to the tribunal, our sage of Obafemi Awolowo said that he will not because the judiciary is corrupt and will not do justice. I will not go to court because justice has been murdered by the judiciary in Nigeria. I repeat, I will not go to court because justice has been murdered by the judiciary in Nigeria. Finally, may I use the opportunity to call on all opposition parties in Nigeria to forthwith boycott all future elections unless and until the current INEC constituted by APC members is dissolved and a new set of non-partisan chairmen and commissioners are appointed into INEC. Further participation by opposition parties in future pre-written election results. Further participation by opposition parties in future pre-written election results under a morally and ethically challenged Professor Mahmoud Yakubu Electoral Commission amounts to giving legitimacy and credence to the continued rape of democracy in Nigeria. I hereby call on all political parties to boycott future elections in this country until Mahmoud Yakubu and the corrupt commissioners of INEC are completely dissolved and a new credible INEC constituted. That is when we can have democracy. If we fail to do that, participation by political parties will mean uh, legitimizing, endorsing, and promoting the illegality that is ongoing. So I call on all political parties to boycott future elections and allow them to run a one-party state because our non-participation will definitely give, will, will, will definitely deny them the legitimacy they need to carry on. So we call on the whole world. We call on international communities. We call on NGOs, CBOs, Nigerian Bar Associations. We called on um, the Nigerian Medical Association of the Nigerian Labor Congress to save Nigeria and save democracy because the security, sorry, because INEC and the judiciary, they have murdered democracy in this country. They have become appendages of APC and results are written even before elections. The National Assembly will have to stop keeping silent in this very satanic uh, issue. The battle to salvage our country from these economic cankerworms and financial scavengers is a battle of no retreat, no surrender. We will continue to speak. We will continue to, 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 to protect our democracy by asking for the right thing.
to be done. Another story here, uh, it's in different newspapers. They said that the president seeks $8.6 billion, 100 billion euro loans to improve livelihood. The president has sought the National Assembly uh, approval to obtain a loan of $8 billion and 100 million euro. It's part of the federal government 2022-24 external borrowing plan. Hmm. It's part of the external borrowing plan, but we need accountability. I think next time, before the president says it for, let us state precisely the things we want to use the money that are borrowed to do. Because we've seen that our leaders are not accountable. That's the problem. The same government that passed a supplementary budget to be able to buy cars for the wife of the president. Why would people not ask questions about accountability? Look at all the state government. Look at Lagos. Look at Abia state government spending frivolously on food and other items. Eh? So it gets to a stage that this borrowing is getting too much. We need to cut our coat according to our cloth. Because we forget that all these loans, no, we are going to pay it back. The one Buhari did on the ground, we've not seen the solution. We are doing many things. At the same time, we are borrowing. At the same time, possibility of printing money and all sorts are going on. We need proper economic management. Our debt profile is rising. And in the medium term expenditure framework, we say we are going to borrow 26 trillion. What are we going to use those monies to do? Eh? But we already seen the signs when we passed the supplement. Supplementary budget is supposed to be for very important things. We wanted to smuggle yachts into it. Then we smuggled the uh, cars for the wife of the president. Then we smuggled other monies into it. It is well with Nigeria. Yes, it is well. That's a humongous amount of money. Although it's been reported that it's to improve uh, livelihood. Uh, that is. What the, you know, improve livelihoods? What are they doing precisely with the money? That's the question we are asking. That's how they say supplementary budgets to, to cater for pressing issues. Is buying a car for the wife of the president pressing issues? Doesn't she have a car already? Can she buy a fleet for herself? When I saw that, I felt very sad because this was the same woman that said, oh, we are coming to impact now. We already have our money before we came to leadership. So why use Nigerian money to buy a car for a wife? Of, is, the, is, is that really a constitutionally recognized rule? If she wants a car, she should use out of her husband's fleet or drive uh, her own car. Can't you see Obama's wife saying that everybody pays for the food they eat in the White House? Keep plundering the wealth of this country, and it's sad. Now, in this day newspaper, it's uh, one of the major stories here. It says that uh, Tinubu to Nigerians present hardship, temporary benefits will be permanent. It says his administration uh, tackling with boldness, decisiveness, manufacturers' challenges, highlight access to low cost uh, capital, multiple taxation, infrastructure issues, FX scarcity, export obstacles among impediments. We should stop giving assurances. We should let us out that would believe all the assurances is given. You don't keep giving assurance when people are not seeing results. It keeps getting hard. Move subsidy, the pain is there. There's massive in, in, in inflation across board. It should give us results. Let's see results. Let's see results. Let's see reduction. He promised that the refineries are going to start by December. Where's the refinery today? That's how we all started that the refinery was going to start so that at least we're going to cushion the effect. Where are the refineries? We are still importing. Next the NMPC is saying they're going to stop importation by next year. Where are the refineries? Let them start working. Let even something work. They will believe him. And if it does, we will praise him. If it doesn't do, we will say the way it is. It's objectivity media. Yes, and um, another story here. Uh, well, let's look at a uh, daily trust newspaper. Can, can Mary, you hear? Yeah, can you Mary, hear? please. I have to say this quickly. I saw a video making the rounds. And I think people use religion to mess up things in this country. There was a lady that was saying, let Tinubu breathe. Oh, he's just coming in and all of that. Pray for our leaders, blah, blah. No, 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 no. 
yes, there's a role for praying our, for our leaders, but there's also a role for demanding accountability. That lady that did that video, does she know the pain a lot of people are suffering? Does she know how people have lost jobs and livelihood? Does she know what people are suffering? How medical and health care is a big problem for people. When our leaders do well, we encourage them. We urge them to do it, but we must also criticize them. Because the best form of patriotism is criticism. Please, people should stop saying, give him time, give him time. Six months is enough time to make an impact. Is it not in less than six months, Olubomi Ojo is doing something great that we are seeing? Are we not praising Olubomi Ojo? He's not a minister in Tinubu's cabinet. So for all of those that say, oh, we don't like Nigeria, you can't like Nigeria more than I love Nigeria. If you do, I will praise you. Won't I be a fool if with all the results I'm seeing Olubomi Ojo, the minister of Nigeria will get, and I don't say it. Six months is enough time to do many things. Most of the decisions taken that have destroyed the economy today is taking less than six months. Two missteps. Removal of subsidy without adequate planning. And secondly, the, 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 the flotation of the Naira. If you have your thinking caps right, six months is more than enough going to get results. Because that's how people will be saying, give me time, give me that. One year will pass. Economic conditions are not getting better. People are suffering, Mary, now. People are suffering. Businesses are suffering. No patronage. No patronage. You know, businesses are closing down. But you, 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 you oh. heard the recent narrative of uh, the president inherited uh, economy that is in comatose. The president inherited a dead economy and all of that. In that. It's just something when you have your thinking cap, you you do something to fix the problem. That was how Buhari even that inherited the flourishing economy. Didn't he say he was clearing Ogian stable? It's not how Buhari deceived us. Now are these same APC people not confessing that Jonathan that they condemned then was the best president in recent times in terms of economic growth? It's going faster than this now. In the next thing we have to we have to start putting headlines. We are saying uh, we want to we want to grow the economy uh, to one trillion economy in the next uh, five years. Mary, see, you know, I've done the calculation for you. Let me do it again. If we are growing, uh, even as far as the first say in the next three years, one professor came on air to try to defend it. I gave him the empirical facts. He ran. I don't have a degree in economy, but I have a degree in common sense. Zero point. 20, 0 0.20 times 390 as you speak today that's 78 billion 390 billion is the price is the our the, our current gdp rates around 390 billion depending on who you are listening to if you are going 20 percent is 0 0.20 that's 20 percent good that's 78 billion 78 billion times seven times in the next seven years seven Five four five forty six billion the year in Omeri five forty six plus three ninety nine thirty six billion. Even if you grow at twenty percent every year, you can't still reach a one trillion economy in the next seven years. This is a mathematical calculation. Except you are going to say, okay, we want to rebase the economy and all of that and capture more sectors. Even if you are growing 20% year on year, you will just be about 936 billion by seven years' time. And go and check the medium term expenditure framework. The growth projections 2.5, 3.5, 4.5, or thereabouts in the next three or four years. So there is no 10% growth in the horizon, or even five, or even seven percent growth in the horizon in the next four years. Part of the seven years. So all this one trillion economy is just, you see, let's do empirical facts and analysis and calculation. It's just narrative posting. Let's set realistic expectations and do what we have to do to be able to build the economy. I'm not a see. I'm not expecting too much. I'm not, that's why when President Tinubu was at first in one of his manifestos, he talked about 12% growth, first came down to 6% growth. I said, let's not deceive ourselves. We are a man of facts. I'm not expecting too much. But at least, let the social factors improve. All right? 
fight inflation, even if it's, if it's inflation, we're going to fight back first. At least push back inflation. Our central bank target for inflation is supposed to be 9%. Today, we are 27%. People are even saying that it's 30% or even more than that. There's this guy, Hanke or something, that calculates inflation number on Twitter. That says Nigeria's inflation is supposed to be at 47% in real figures. Mm. But look, let's they are quoting over 27%. The is to bring inflation down so that we can have price stability. Mary, I go to the market a lot. You go to the market this week, next week is as if 1,000 naira be added to what you bought for 1,000 naira less. The inflation is unbelievable. Something you bought two weeks ago at 10,000 naira is already 12,000 naira. So even if it's that you are going to break down, do it. Those are outcomes we are talking about. Yeah, Rufai. You know, in the news here, it says that uh, uh, the bank recapitalization, the presidency the backs the CBA, investors rush for mega bank sectors. And uh, also, uh, uh, Tinebu advisors are saying that uh, we must address banks' uh, capital ad adequacy to grow the economy. You know, all, the, all, of, all of these big grammars, Nigerians just want to see results. If we could just get a little, a little breather. But on that one, I can't fault President Tinobu. Yes, we need to recapitalize the banks. See, when Soludo did first recapitalization, the capital base of the banks then, the minimum was 25 billion. 25 billion then was $187 million. Today, that 25 billion is just 32 mil billion. I mean, it's just $32 million. You can see how much Genera has lost from 25 billion being $187 million. So today it being $32 million. So we need to recapitalize the banks so that our banks are complete effectively. Yeah. But the question also, when we recapitalize our banks, how much lending are our banks doing to the core real sector of the economy? We all know the business are most of the banks. We just see the run tripping and everything and forex markets. So ex apart from recapitalizing, but except we make our bank lenders, to the core aspect of the economy, which is trade, agriculture, investment, and all of that, will not be able to scale.